Okay, so um, let us now consider uh, the uh, the properties of the uh, linear blow codes. So they are listed here. Some of the properties are listed here. Uh, this is not uh, the entire list of all the properties that they have. Uh, but these properties are as follows. First property is that no matter what specific channel coding scheme it is, if it is a linear block code, then all zero vector is always a valid code word. This is uh, the first property. Now, if now there are some channel channel coding schemes uh, that that do not belong to uh, the family of linear block codes. Meaning they cannot be uh, described in terms of G and H matrices. You cannot uh, say that uh, for those coding schemes, H times C is a zero, where H is a matrix and C is a vector. You may not be able to do parity checks as simply as that. Or maybe you may not be able to generate uh, the encoded code word by using a generator matrix. C may not be always equal to G times M. So there are certain uh, channel coding schemes which are not linear uh, schemes. And for those schemes, uh, it is conceivable that um, an all zero vector is not part of the valid code word set. That, however, is never the case for any of the block codes that are linear. The all zero vector is always a valid code word. So that is this property number one. The second property is that if you take modulo to sum of any two different valid code words C1 and C2, uh, then the resultant binary sequence, which is obviously n bit long, uh, is also a valid code word. It, it, it will uh, satisfy that equation h times c equal to 0. The third property is that the minimum Hamming distance of this linear block code is equal to the minimum of the Hamming weights of all valid non-zero code words. This is a pretty important property and we'll make use of it uh, momentarily. And then uh, the fourth property that uh, we are going to consider uh, is a little bit uh, more detailed in terms of its description, but it's also pretty uh, straightforward in terms of uh, understanding uh, the main message. So this property says that suppose we get some binary word R of length n bits, and let us say that it is received over the binary symmetric channel and therefore it can be given as the transmitted code word C plus the error vector E that the BSC introduces. Remember, uh, wherever there is a 1 in E, the corresponding transmitted bit of the code word gets flipped and therefore R is not same as C. Now, remember that receiver just gets R. It doesn't know what C is. And the objective of receiver is to figure out what C is. And so one thing that the receiver can do is uh, it can take R and then it can uh, pre-multiply it with H to get H times R. Now, that makes sense because if there were no errors, then R will be equal to C and H times C will be an all zero vector, which will tell the receiver that uh, it has received a valid code word and hopefully there are no zeros. Uh, but in reality, whenever there are errors, it can happen that this H times R will not be all zero vector. And let us call the corresponding binary vector as S. Uh, now the size of this S vector will obviously be U cross 1 because there are a total of U parity checks. Uh, H has uh, U rows 
and so s will be a u cross 1 vector but now it will not necessarily be uh, an all zero vector sorry about that um and in fact this s vector is known as the syndrome vector uh you can look up the meaning of the word syndrome online uh it means almost like symptom so if somebody has some viral infection then that person will start exhibiting some symptoms uh it in here whenever the transmitted code word uh also has certain type of illness which is because this vector e has uh, some non zero elements then when you do this product h times r there will be a symptom that will appear because this product will not be all zeros anymore and that is why the vector s is called a syndrome vector or a symptom vector symptomatic vector whenever s is not zero then the receiver starts understanding that there is something wrong in the vector r it is not same as the transmitted code word now it is not necessary that when s is all zero vector r is same as the transmitted code word why is that i will i'll let you think about it uh but so so when s is uh is all zero we we cannot be 100% sure that there are no errors but when s is non zero i mean so when s is all zero vector we cannot be sure that there are no errors but when s is non zero when s has some non zero elements then we can be sure that the channel has corrupted the transmitted bit sequence okay so that is a long description uh, before we can actually state the main property and the property says that the syndrome vector s is a function only of e and not of c it doesn't matter what c is c can be any one of uh the total of 2 to the power k transmitted code words the specific value that the syndrome vector s takes is determined entirely by the value of e so that is this property number 4 okay um so let us move on um um oh by the way um i would like you to prove all of this properties yourself um i know that you are working on the project uh, of this course um but um i'm sure uh you need to take breaks uh if you keep on just focusing on the same topic over a long period of time without changing the tracks it may get little tiring so whenever you have some extra time please uh work on this homework assignments that i have given you and i have given you many of them already Uh, but all of them are kind of simple i have asked you to uh, consider the g and h matrices for many of this channel coding schemes that we have seen and now i am asking you to prove this four properties of linear block codes um using just pencil and paper and using some simple uh, algebraic uh, derivations okay um 
Now let us see where these properties are applied. Uh, so property 1 and 2 are, are actually uh, very basic properties and, and they, they are used uh, a lot of different times. Um, we won't get into uh, all of their applications. Uh, but, but I can say that you will probably need to use make use of properties 1 and 2 in order to derive the proof of property number 3. And by the way, the proof of property 3 is probably the most uh, involved proof. You will probably need to spend, you will need to uh, do the most amount of thinking to prove number 3. 1, 2 and 4 are pretty straightforward in my opinion. Let us see how property 3 is used. Uh, now, the property 3 is about minimum hemming distance and so obviously it allows us to determine minimum hemming distance but it, it does so in a very uh, efficient manner. If you do not use property 3 or if you do not know property 3 and if you were asked to evaluate uh, dh min, then I think this we have discussed uh, in the class uh, before the midterm exam too that to, to get uh, the evaluation of dh min you will actually need to calculate all pairwise distances between all possible pairs of code words and because there are 2 to the power k code words uh, the total tabulation that you will need to do will have 2 to the power k choose 2 uh, values which is a pretty humongous number uh, even for uh, values of k which are fairly small maybe 10 or 20 and here you are talking about a number which is already pretty large. Uh, now instead of doing that instead of uh, taking each code word comparing, comparing, comparing it with other code words and then taking the uh, difference between uh, the each pair of code words uh, because of property 3 we can simplify this procedure and there all we need to do is just we would determine the smallest weight of uh, all valid non-zero code words a and because of property 3 we can say that that is equal to dh min uh, now let us see how to calculate dh min for 7 for Hemming code so there, what we do is, uh, we go back to this set of equations and let us first case take all these four bits to be zero, m1, m2, m3, m4 are zero and so obviously parity will be all zeros and so you will get all zero code word. But property 3 says that it is the Hemming weight of the non-zero code word which equals to dh min. Now how do you get the minimum of Hemming weights of all non-zero code word? Well the way to do that is to take any one of these four bits and make them one and keep the remaining three to be zeros. So one of these four M bits are one, the remaining three are zeros. If you look at this set of equations what you will see is that no matter which of these M bits I make one as soon as I make one message bit to be one, at least two parity bits will become one. So if I make m1 to be one, then p1 and p2 are also ones. Remember when I make m1 equal to one, I am making only one of the message bits to be one. The other threes are still zeros. And so when I make m1 to be one, p1 and p2 are forced to be one because m2, m3 and m4 are zeros. If I make m2 to be 1, then p1 and p3 are forced to be zeros. If I make m3 to be 1, then p2 and p3 are forced to be zeros. And in the last case, if I make m4 to be 1, actually p1, p2 and p3, all 3s are going to be zeros, uh, to be 1s. And so, no matter which of the uh, message bits I turn to 1, turn into a 1, at least two parity bits will become one 
which means that the weight is three bits one from the message bit and two from the parity bits and so that right away tells us that dh min is equal to three bit you cannot get a hemming code a hemming code word um, which is non zero and whose weight is less than three bits if it is a code word of hemming uh, code then either it is all zero or it has at least three bits which are ones and so from there we conclude that dh min of hemming code is three bits